In this update, we have a very active subtropical jet stream that's going to be fueling storm development over the next couple of weeks. So let's start off with the details going forward on the satellite picture. And you can actually see there's actually three pockets of energy down here in the Pacific Basin. There's actually one right here. And then there's another one right here. And then there's a third piece of energy down here in the Pacific Basin. And we've got a very intense Southwest flow. And that's gonna be pulling these spokes of energy into the Southern branch of the US, increasing the rain amounts. At the same time, we've had a dominating ridge of high pressure up here in the Pacific Northwest. That's gonna be slowly migrating from West to East over the couple next coming days into next week. And that'll be building the ridge across our northern tier. So let's break down the details for, to, for today because we do have some severe storms to be concerned about. And we look at, look at the overall big picture. And we can actually see there's a pocket of energy down here ahead of the cold front up here into portions of Oklahoma. They're getting some active rain showers. Yesterday, the panhandle of Texas actually got hit hard with very heavy rain for them. And that's all ahead of this cold front. So we do find ourselves under a slight risk for severe storms in places like the Little Rock region bound down here in the Dallas Fort Worth region that encompasses even portions of central Texas at ahead of that pretty you know decent cold front for this time of year pretty good cool down and that's going to bring bring in some rounds of showers and thunderstorms as we get into the heat of the afternoon and you can actually see by the time we head into maybe seven o'clock time frame I think a lot of this action gets going around four or five o'clock this afternoon. So there's gonna be a, a line, not just a, not a widespread line, but a 40, for 40 to 50% coverage of what they what's often referred to as clusters of thunderstorms. And some of these could be some higher wind gusts, some small, even some large hail, pockets of isolated large hail mixed in with this as this continues to lift from the Northwest to the Southeast, but it is gonna be fairly progressive. So I'm not expecting like any flooding concerns out of this particular system. So it's gonna be a quick round of moving showers and stronger thunderstorms as we get deeper into your late afternoon, early evening timeframe. So back behind that though, we've got a, like I mentioned, we've got a pretty significant Cool down for May standards, and that's some chillier air. Well, widespread 40s are draped across the middle part of the country. Even in when you get you know lows right at 50 degrees in Oklahoma this time of year, that's 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 definitely a welcome sight. So it's going to feel a little bit uh, cooler in the days to come. And this is drier air back behind this cold front as well. So it's going to be really nice back behind the cold front. You can actually see by the time we get into Saturday morning how fast and more progressive this cold front is, right? It's all draped across a good part of South Texas already, but out ahead of it, that's where the showers and thunderstorms are, and the main focal point is gonna be down here in portions of the Southeast. That'll be lifting northbound across portions of the Carolinas and getting up in here into uh, New England, where it could slow down a little bit. That will be increasing the rain amounts, you know, possibly one, maybe one and a half inches of rainfall for that Saturday time frame, and but by Sunday that will be quickly moving off into the open waters. But as you go into Sunday afternoon, yeah, this is widespread high temperatures, folks. So yeah, where it's high, high and dry is up here into the Pacific Northwest. So well above average temperatures for portions of Idaho back into Montana. So yeah, anytime you get you know temperatures in Montana that's higher than places like into Shreveport, <laughs> you know that's a cold front. Or for the southern tier, and that's exactly for a good part of the country is going to be experiencing widespread 70s coming up for your Sunday. So it's definitely going to be feeling really nice for a good part of the country and clearing out as well. So we've got some storm development out ahead of it, but back behind that cold front, you can see how far south it gets. It actually gets all the way into the deep south heading into your Sunday morning. So again, right out ahead of it, places like into Georgia, places like into South Carolina and to North Carolina, you have the instability and the rain showers out ahead of that cold front. But once that cold front clears your area, it's definitely gonna be feeling really nice. And you can see all these high pressures fill in on the backside. That's much drier air and more stable air, at least for the short term, uh, you know, back behind that cold front. So overall, the next three days, here's your precipitation. So 
you know, we got the high pressure locked over the Pacific Northwest. That's going to be migrating across the central U.S. Underneath that, stable air, sinking air, no rising motion air. So it's very hard pressed to get rain out of that type of atmosphere. But the southern branch is active. And that's all complements of that active subtropical jet stream that's really going to be elevant in the days ahead and the weeks ahead. So it's going to have a lot of lift associated with it and bring rounds of showers and thunderstorms for over the next three days here's the placement of where the heavier rainfall will be uh over the next uh, three days but as we transition into next week so things get a little bit more interesting like i mentioned we've got that ridge is going to be slowly migrating across from west to the east slowly all through next week at the same time we've got another pocket of energy down here portions west, west of uh, puerto rico that's going to bring them an unsettled weather for them. And you can actually see where the cold front is by then. It's draped across the I-20 corridor. In fact, it continues to ooze a little bit further southbound. Eventually, getting out in the open waters of the Gulf of Mexico and across portions of the south, off the coast of the southeast. And over time, there are subtle hints that this may try to spin up an area of low pressure and maybe the longer it sits might become a little bit more tropical maybe more maybe a tropical type disturbance maybe trying to form in the later period down here because we do have a lot of lift that's going to be coming in off those spokes of energy out there in the pacific basin and that's going to be fueling these thunderstorms and fueling the atmosphere and all you have to get is these low pressure sitting out in the open waters especially down those warm warm anomalies down there in the gulf and off the southeast coast yeah, it's not out of the question. We could be looking at some, you know, tropical type disturbance trying to develop. So here's the surface map as you transition into your Monday night. So here's the setup. So you got that stalled frontal boundary across portions of the southeast. That'll bring in the rain showers for them. Southern portions of Alabama getting into Georgia. Pretty much all of Florida definitely needs the rain for them. But look where the placement is, right? So the placement and the lift mechanism is really, really desperately need the rainfall the most is out there in West Texas into New Mexico, you know, Amarillo. So places like in the Panhandle yesterday, I told you we had a lot of heavier rainfall. We're going to be adding to those totals as we go into next week. So this is definitely a welcome sign in areas that desperately need the rainfall and there's the ridge will slowly build so there's tuesday may 23rd as the temperature anomalies really start to build over the top and then you have that more active subtropical jet stream underneath that by default will be increasing cloud cover increasing the shower activity in the heat of the afternoon and also lowering those overall temperatures so it's going to be feeling really nice along the southern branch and then you'll have these active setups for daytime heating showers and thunderstorms while we have the jet stream aloft is you know you got light steering currents in this type of situation so the jet streams well to the north in fact it's up in canada and so that makes the southern branch as these systems kind of come across right they've got very light steering currents to work with and they just don't move in a in a you know a fast fashion in, in, a, in, in over time because they have very light steering winds aloft and that's all you have to do is like kind of bubble up the atmosphere and then you ring out the atmosphere in the heat of the afternoon and then once the sun set those thunderstorms typically should start to die off once they lose that that daytime heating in this particular type atmosphere but to the north like i mentioned we're going to have that ridge continue to migrate from west to east all week long and this is what you kind of look for if you have some sort of tropical type development the ridge over troubled waters <laughs> these are 500 millibar pressure pressure points and has lowering pressures right there along that stalled frontal boundary that's been kind of sitting out there all week long so over time this could produce a low pressure center and try to lower these pressures down there into the gulf of mexico and down here in portions off the southeast coast and that's exactly what you find going into thursday your 25th as we head into going towards memorial weekend we've got a low pressure center down here off into florida because we had that spoke of energy that was west of puerto rico and then we also have that stalled frontal boundary so over time naturally that's going to spin up and lower these pressures 
and now you find yourself under maybe a 10 10 millibar with very weak low pressure as that this would be slowly trying to migrate and lift and drift further north and that's exactly what you see headed into your friday time frame the 26 so the area is back into florida with that low pressure like i mentioned with this light steering currents it really doesn't go anywhere in a, in a fast amount of time these just kind of drift and meander in the kind of the same area so where you're getting a lot, a lot of the rain is are along the central u.s again where these areas that are in a drought prone areas that desperately need the rainfall and if you look at the overall seasonal drought outlook that came out yesterday this goes through the entire summer folks and yeah you can see for the middle part of the country these areas that have you know the drought still remains but it definitely has a much improving conditions over time for the texas panhandle western oklahoma a good part of kansas a good part of nebraska so areas that are in a severe and exceptional drought there's definitely help on the way as we get transition deeper into summer and start eating away some of those drought drought induced areas you know with the above average rainfalls for that region and look at florida it's expected to just wipe away the drought altogether heading through the rainier times of this year of going into your wet season and yes by the time we get into the end of you know end of september end of august for for ending a uh, summer then you should not even actually be in a drought so it's over that three month time frame that's going to be eating away that much but yes like i mentioned we're looking at possibly you know some lift mechanism we've looked at the vertical velocity index this is the japanese model that came out yesterday has a lot of blue that's upward rising motion air right off the southeast coast and the same thing with the eps guidance with the vertical velocity index also implying down here to end in the same line of, line of fire right off the southeast coast has a lot of green showing up at the map that's an, a heavier indication where they've got more upward rising motion air so there's there's definitely signs of the pieces of the puzzle trying to come together and saying hey we have to look at that look at that area as we head towards memorial weekend for not only just very heavy rain if there's going to be sitting there long enough if it might even try to spin up in some tropical type entity so yeah and even the the latest ensembles it kind of are already kind of hitting that that's that piece of energy that was near puerto rico and there's also that stalled frontal boundary off the southeast coast so this is your probabilities you know beyond seven days this would be heading into your memorial weekend of a weak maybe tropical type depression trying to form down there in this region so we'll definitely be fine tuning that in the days ahead but yeah even the latest gfs definitely kind of implies the same way so all these global models are kind of hinting at the same area that you know the pieces of the puzzle are coming together with the more active subtropical jet there we'll have to watch this area for sure as we get deeper into next week and this is the same thing with the update from the climate prediction center has the heavier rainfall by the time we head into the 26 27 time frame across portions of oklahoma into kansas and nebraska back into iowa and the southern portions of minnesota and then with that complements of the lowering pressures of the 500 millibar the vertical velocity index pretty bullish yes puts this whole area under the bullseye for heavier rainfall as we go into memorial weekend 26 29 time frame florida panhandle all all of florida southeastern portions of georgia into south carolina into north carolina so definitely be on high alert for just definitely some heavier rainfall in that region and if you look at the climate prediction center it's implying the same thing right you have a less active polar jet you've got that ridge building over the top that's been basically locked over the pacific northwest and that's going to be migrating across the north central u.s and putting these well above average temperature anomalies on the northern branch but the southern branch is active when it's more active you get near normal in or slightly below normal conditions for the southern branch and then of course off the coast where it's definitely more unsettled where it's hinting at maybe a tropical type disturbance at least heavier rainfall will form 
naturally with cloud cover and just raining almost every day that's going to put that area you know below average temperatures but if you take a look at the breakdown just even on the blend of the models for the next seven days on the northern branch with the jet stream to the north in fact it's in canada you're going to be seeing heavier rains up there along the jet stream and then to the south of there underneath the ridge of that high pressure that's where you're going to find a kind of a drier type conditions. There's not much upward rising motion air. So overall, you're not going to be seeing that much rainfall. But on the southern branch, where it definitely gets more active, is across Kansas, is across a good part of Oklahoma, into the Texas Panhandle, and back into West Texas, Central, and portions of North Texas, but definitely draped across the Southeast, right? With the combination of the cold front, stalling cold front, the 500 millibar, the vertical velocity index i mean you got all the you know the pieces of the puzzle saying hey this is an area that's going to be getting hit with very heavy rainfall over the coming days into next week and then the northern branch is going to be seeing less rainfall as you'll start to be dry, start to dry out so guys i appreciate you guys uh, following do follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I definitely update on those platforms on a daily basis. And catch me next update. Wire protect you before and after the storm.